Hey everybody, it's Pete. Good morning. Welcome to a new episode of Today's Best Stock Picks. It's Monday morning, August 17, 2020. Hopefully you had a nice weekend. It was actually beautiful down here in South Florida, really nice. Today we're going to talk about the mystery of the floating S&P 500 that just keeps drifting higher. Uh, it was a little bit perplexing, but now we're starting to see that it's actually pausing on lighter volume. The most confusing part about it is why... <laughs> Was there no profit taking whatsoever? It feels like we've been up for um, the better part of two weeks without a pause. We did have one day of selling, but the next day came back very quickly. We had one day of selling in the afternoon. The next day it came back very quickly. Uh, the market's not going down right now, which it, it could happen today. I don't know. I can tell you flat out, it's way overdue. But if you are trading to try and predict and you keep shorting, keep shorting, keep shorting, you're leaving a lot of good money on the other side of the tape. So until we see some proof which means at least lower highs and lower lows on the daily charts. Uh, for those of us that are active traders looking to maybe look to initiate some short sales for about a week with some profit taking, you're missing out on some good ideas. There's, there's really no other way to put it. Could you be shorting those ideas? Could you be trying to pick a top? Yeah, but I will tell you uh, in my long tenured career, it's not, it's not the way to trade. <laughs> I did it early in my career and whether you're day trading or swing trading, trying to pick a top, uh, is pointless, and here's why it's pointless. You feel like you're you're gonna get the the very best price, and when things start to go down, you're gonna be like, I got it all the way up here, and <laughs> well, what you're missing out on is the easy trades going in the other direction. So you feel like a hero that you manage risk in trades that kept going higher, uh, but you're missing out on the easier trades where you should be buying the pullbacks or the pauses, looking for the next move up, and that's been the easier trade. Now again, easier means obvious. Uh, if you took, somebody actually said in the boot camp this week uh, that if you took the name off of any of these, is you just look at the, you know, read the tape and read the order flow. It's just keep buying until you see a reason not to keep buying. And we haven't seen a reason not to keep buying. Um, some of the sectors that we're looking at, individual sectors such as the airlines, uh, the cruise lines, the casino, some of them are perking up a little bit recently, but not really tradable yet. One day, uh, heroes, that kind of thing, maybe two days, but there's not enough clean order flow. So we're gonna to stick to what's obvious right now. Uh, by the way, if you like these videos and getting benefit out of them, and especially if you're making money, subscribe to the channel, click down and give me your feedback. Let me know if there's anything you'd like to see covered in future trades, uh, future videos. And uh, if you'd like to trade together, definitely click down and learn more about the bootcamp. So what's kind of, kind of cool about today is we're gonna actually, we have a list of old school stocks that we called out probably about a week and a half ago where they, they started to break out to new highs and now they're pausing, setting up some good opportunity. We do have a couple of trades this week that I think could be explosive. Uh, and specifically, I'm talking about NVAX again, Novavax, and Walmart, which has earnings tomorrow. Walmart's kind of consolidating right at this big level. It's giving all the signs that it's going to continue and explode higher. I don't see any reason to expect it not to, especially with that, the new uh, Amazon competition that they're coming out with, uh, Amazon uh, Walmart Plus, I think it's called. Uh, so anyway, let's hit the charts and... Um, Let's get into it. We will uh, take a look at why we're looking at NVAX, why we're looking at Walmart. Um, so anyway, you can see here with the SPY, we've now traded at or near all-time highs. And look, by the way, there's no golden rule that says we have to make all-time highs. I mean, everybody just assumes it's going to happen. The bubble underneath the Fed is still, you know, under the market from the Fed is still there. Um, but we have two really light volume pause days again. We call them indecision candles, melted candles. Um, do I personally think the market's due for a pullback? Yeah, absolutely. It's basically a, almost, it's a seven week rally now without really any decent declines. Um, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna be trading for, <laughs> for a decline, it's still going higher. So until I see a reason not to be a buyer, we're buyers, right? Um, so anyway, we're gonna get into some trades. NVAX is the first one, uh, which is actually up again this morning. Uh, we had an inside day here last week and then a melted candle, but a nice, move to the upside. We're going to end up getting another gap higher this morning. Uh, and you can see the news here, uh, mid-stage uh, COVID-19 in South Africa. I don't care about where it is, but it is the market has attention on it right now. And we're going to be looking to actively trade this stock again. If it's a stock that might move a little bit volatile for you, that you could either reduce your share size dramatically uh, or only day trade the stock. I've made it clear I'm not swing trading these stocks. I don't like the fact that at any moment news could come out and have the stock explode in either direction. Uh, you can't only look to one side of the market. You have to ma manage that risk before the trade. So NVAX is a big one that's going to be in the list today. Looking forward to trade above 150, which that's where it's opening. As long as it's above 
Friday's high, I'm looking to day trade that long and still be long. Walmart earnings on Tuesday. And what I love about this stock is since this news got announced and we've been hanging right around this 132 level, uh, I'm looking to be long as long as it's above that level. And this, by the way, obviously I mostly trade, this could be a long-term position because if they get a grip on what they're doing, they're gonna be a serious threat for Amazon because they have all of the resources that Amazon has and, in, and the same logistics system. It's just a question of dialing it in. Uh, next we have um, AMAC. Old school trade that exploded on Friday, something I used to trade all the time. But this is really where your tape reading skills get combined with order flow. Uh, and you can see that we, tra we traded right into resistance. So I'm actually waiting for the stock to be back above 68. As long as it's above 68, I like it long for a new swing trade. And you can see you get really clean push and pause. And above 68, we like the swing trade. Uh, next, we have FedEx, and my gosh, how much stronger can this stock be on Friday? Another uh, day, back, well, probably the only thing that was really trading well on Friday for some of the stocks that we had in our list. The volume just dropped off a cliff on Friday. Good day to learn how to manage risk, and I'm very proud of everybody in the community that dialed it back and didn't throw money away. But FedEx was one of those trades that just does seem to keep following through. And now we have a four-day pause. Um, interesting, right? Now we also have the news behind this story with the whole – uh, uh, United States Postal Service versus the president versus all the funding. And it's become a mess, but obviously FedEx and UPS are benefiting from that right now. So I still like this one long. Uh, CVNA is one that absolutely needs to be in your list. We had just an amazing spike and we keep talking about, wait for it to give us a better spot, wait for it to give us a better spot. Well, it's here. It's given us a better spot. Let's absolutely keep this stock in our list today and especially tomorrow. Um, both day, but today because it's it's really consolidated after this monster move and volatile move to the upside, it absolutely needs to be in your list today. Um, if it trades lower, let it go. It's not a short sale like we said before, but a breakout to the upside could be a really good volatile trade this week that should be easier to manage. Uh, next, BBY, again, making new highs. I'm waiting for this stock to pause, but again, this is one of those stocks that needs to be in your watch list. Not a trade I'd be looking to initiate a new swing trade here, but absolutely keep it in the list. Uh, along those same lines of retail, Dollar General and, uh, excuse me, Dollar General, Dollar General and Dollar Tree, both at or near breakout levels. Dollar Tree sitting right at the $100 level. I like initiating a new swing trade today. And then if it closes above 100, looking to add to that position. So we're going to be initiating that trade in two pieces. Then we have EAT. I've actually not been swing trading this stock long. Uh, I didn't like how fast and how far it moved. However, it has been a stock to day trade. Whether or not you want to, because again, with the, the criteria, the mental gymnastics you have to run with yourself is, all right, the stock's been up strong for two weeks. If I buy it today, what are the odds of it being higher over the next three to four days? Or will I be sitting in a losing trade until it turns around? Started to slow down a little bit on Friday. It's still a day trade long as long as it meets the criteria. But gosh, if this could pull back to somewhere in the 30 four area where it broke out, maybe even 33. I don't think it'll get down that far, but then we could be initiating a nice aggressive swing trade long on the next breakout. Uh, ICE, I-C-E, kind of getting off the beaten path here, right? Uh, but you can see here, clear breakout, very nice job by everybody in the community. We had push up to resistance, paused right at resistance. Now the better trade is if we paused above resistance, but we sat right there. Either way, we broke through on Friday. It looks like a really nice clean energy candlestick. As long as it's above that breakout, looking to build a situate, uh, build a swing trade and stay in that swing trade. The exit would be if it closes back in that level. Very simple. Zillow gave us another, very similar to CBNA. Actually, I like CBNA better, but uh, Zillow, really nice, clean pause consolidation after the gap higher. Again, this is where a lot of traders are getting trouble trading these gaps. You have this giant gap up, buying the day of the gap, and if it starts to pull back, you're like, ah, oh, I'm in a losing position. Let it pause. Let it do exactly what it just did there, and you're not taking on all that additional risk. You have a much cleaner um, spot to manage risk and an easier entry, which in this case would be above Friday's high. Uh, Zillow, excuse me, not Zillow. Um, Dow, got a bunch of old school stocks here. Dow, which we, we reported on last week. Dow, DuPont, look at this push and pause. I mean, it doesn't get any cleaner. A push, a pause with room to go. Then we also have Honeywell, very similar price action as well, a push a pause. Honeywell needs to clear the 164 level before making a run at 184, but that's $20, so keep that in your list. Maybe even start make, working a list here. Uh, UPS as well. Uh, look, UPS and FedEx, as we said, really benefiting 
Um, now we have a multi-day pause. We want to basically the last week was an entire week of pausing after this gap, a run up, and a pause again. So now it's opening up higher again. So we still like it. It's just a question of the right price. And Caterpillar to finish up today. We've been watching the stock. We really like it as long as it was above one. Uh, 40 finally got above 140 has done nothing but pause or pull back uh, closed right on the bubble on Friday so it really was a question of whether you get out of the trade uh, at, a, at for four cent loss no uh, really the, when I say four cent loss we were saying we wanted it to stay above 140 only come back to the screen because it's kind of important uh, one of the biggest questions we get all the time is okay if it get, if it takes me out to the penny do I get out of the trade and the answer is no <laughs> use a little bit of judgment if you have a stop loss at 140 and it closes at 139.99, that's don't get stopped out for a penny. That's honestly that's just silly. Um, so anyway, the stock is basically trading flat, trading right at 140. Today we'll be monitoring it for a close below 140 on the daily chart again. If it does, then we'll take the loss. If it starts to get clobbered today, you can scale out of some of it, but stick to the rules, uh, which means scale out or get out. The trade still looks great if it can hold above 140 and make another run. And, and you have to think about it. It went from 128 to 145. That's a pretty decent move for Caterpillar over roughly just over a week. So it's still consolidating that move. So if it trades lower today and you're not comfortable with the trade, waiting for it to close on the daily chart, you can scale out of a little bit. And if it gets back above 140, you can put it back on, especially in this commission-free world that we're in right now. Uh, but hang on to it. It's, it's still a valid idea with profit potential in a sector that is actually finding uh, some movement. The industrial sector for the last week and the last month has been strong. So it's in the right sector as well. So a little bit of management around that level that exactly where you got in, but keep an eye on CBNA today and especially this, especially today, but this week, NVAX again has some good news and Walmart earnings tomorrow should be super interesting. So that's what we got today. Have a great day, everybody. Have a profitable day. I'll speak to you soon.